what? Before you see to turn around, shake hands with someone. Appreciate it. Amen. It was a lot done from the roof out to the flagpole, down the kids' area, everywhere. The seats that you're sitting on are clean and sanitized. If you didn't notice. And if yours isn't, I'm blaming Miss Terry up there because she had me do it. So if I didn't do a good job, it's her fault. Um, just a few announcements to, to remind you of here. Um, this is a volunteer recruitment month. If you're interested in getting involved in the church, just see someone on staff. We'd be happy to get plugged in. Um, Fall Fest is coming up this Wednesday from 6 to 7.30. Uh, we need some more volunteers, if you wouldn't mind signing up for that. I wanted to remind you, if you're here for a trunk or treat, if you get here at 5 o'clock. I saw some pictures from trunk or treat last year. Pretty impressive. I know there's been a lot of talk about who's going to win trunk or treat. And after seeing those pictures, I just want to say, you know, it's all about the kids. It doesn't matter who wins or loses. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I don't sing. All right. <laughs> Just a reminder, Kids Fest registration is due next week on the 30th, the $30 deposit. That's a great weekend of fun for the, the kids. If you want more information about that, then go see Ms. Carla, and she'll tell you all about the kids having a great time doing that. All right, uh, look to your neighbors, say November the 5th. November no, the one 5th. more time. Say November the 5th. November. Can't forget that. That's when we're having homecoming. It's on a Saturday. We're going to start the festivities at 4 church is going to provide the fried chicken bless the lord and then we're going to bring in all the sides they're going to have something special for the kids during the service uh, that night at six um, and just a reminder this week is the fall fest it won't be a midweek service we're going to have a great time together okay all right all i know is what i know we are going to have the sanctuary maybe okay all right so some of us will be out eating candy. Some of us will be here eating the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now see, now I'm going to make myself be unspiritual if I'm out there and doing the candy. That, that wasn't a good segue. Uh, next Sunday. Next Sunday we're having baby dedication. So call the church office to sign up. Also next Sunday is family luncheon. This is, this is my announcements. It says bring a crock pot or dish of your favorite fall foods like chili soup chicken and dumplings chicken noodle cornbread or dessert it sounds like someone's asking for a menu i'm not sure but it sounds like a menu so i'm just going to add banana pudding to that <laughs> hallelujah feel the lord all right just a reminder to uh, uh if you're wanting to follow us you can please do so on all the social media platforms if i could have the ushers come at this time i'm going to read out of proverbs Proverbs 11. Just a reminder from the Lord. One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another man withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous man will prosper. He refreshes others, will himself be refreshed. Just remember, there's a lot of things going on in this church, and I know that you guys know that, and we get to be a part of it. We get to be a part of what's going on. We get to be a part of worship through our giving like we do this morning. Lord, we come before you. Lord, I thank you for a church that has so much going on. And Lord, I was just blessed being here this weekend, seeing all the people that came out to help take care of the house of the Lord. Um, Lord, we, we spend so much time taking care of our own things. Lord, I, I just know there's a special blessing for those who show up and, and take care of your house and do it without thanks or without pay, Lord, but just do it as unto you. And Lord, I just speak blessing to those people. Lord, I speak blessing to those who, as they give this morning, I pray, Lord, that you take what we give, that you would bless it and break it and multiply it to your glory and to the ministries of this church. Holy Spirit, we ask right now that you would have your way in service. Lord, you know the songs that are, that are planned and the, the word that you put on pastor's heart. And Lord, I pray that you would prepare our hearts right now, that you would bind distractions in our mind and around us, Lord, and let us just... Do what that old song says. Forget about ourselves and concentrate on you and worship you. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name.
since I was born again. I have been raptured in, so undeserving and yet, in spite of my sin, he loved me and he called me his. I am his very own, through his love I've been changed, now I proclaim Abba. Save me, Abba, Abba. I have a father who really loves me, Abba, Abba. He'll never leave me and never forsake me. Ever since I've been baptized, I've taken on the name of Christ. He gave me my identity, now I'm free from every generational curse. Because of him it's been reversed, I am joint heirs with Jesus, now I proclaim Abba.
sing it out this morning. I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Shine through the 
Can right now you just lift up the name of Jesus? I just want to speak the name of Jesus to every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Because your name is your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn Shout Jesus on the mountains and Jesus in the 
declaration of your family right now. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus on the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. With every eye closed, I want us to go to prayer for some people that need a miracle this morning. In this process of praying, we're going to speak Jesus over Sister Alberta. She's at the hospital, went through surgery a couple of days ago, and is in major pain. She called me just a while ago saying, have the church pray. We're going to remember Samantha Smith's children. She's at Children's right now. And that little baby has been diagnosed with RSV, and we're going to believe for a miracle. If it was your family, if it was your child, if it was your grandchild, you'd begin to speak the name that's above every name. We're going to speak the name of a cat, the daughter, his mother right now. The name it brings healing. The name it brings peace. The name it brings a covering. God, we speak it and we shout it over our families. You can break every addiction. You can break every yoke of bondage. You can heal those that need healing. And you can do miracles like none other. And God, we're claiming that miracle right now. We're believing in that miracle right now. We ask that your hand begin to move right now, Jesus. We call on your name. We cry out to your name. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. Father, we magnify you. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. One more time, sing a chorus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Holy, 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 holy. Turn around about three people and tell them I'm speaking Jesus over every circumstance and every problem in your life right now.
holy. Yesterday we was here cleaning the church and doing all kind of stuff. Just a little bit more keyboard in the monitor, please, sir. And a song got on my heart. Knew we was going to be talking about speaking the name of Jesus. Knew we was going to be singing songs about worshiping Him and loving the Father. And there's an old song by Lamar Campbell. And I just had to listen to it all the way here this morning. Tara sent us a, a text yesterday of a song called Only Jesus. And it seemed like the whole day yesterday and this morning came around that one word. Jesus. I love to read about him. I love to have conversations with him. I love my one-on-one -on -one with the Father. Can't have the one-on-one -on -one with my earthly father, but I can have the one-on-one -on -one with my heavenly father. And that little song, just a verse of it. Give me a little bit more in the monitor, please. I lift my hands and toll the ladder unto you. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Cloudy day, ha. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift, I lift my hands and toes. Sing it, guys. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. Ha. Love you more than anything. Do that verse again. I need the vocals. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Oh, it says, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I magnify you in this house you are holy you are righteous and you are worthy God I ask that you just have your way in these few moments that we're together let your word go forth that you have placed in me let me not be seen but let your word be heard God I praise you for the atmosphere of worship I praise you for the spirit of freedom and God, even for those that are watching online, I ask that you minister to them. 
To those that may be coming in, minister to them. To those that can't be here, let them know that there is a church praying and covering them like never before. In your holy and righteous name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. I'm going to let the guys at Bell just stay up here, the musicians. I promise I won't be long, but I do want to share something with you this morning. The other day, we was here Tuesday night, and we got to talking about eagles. I got thinking about David Jarvis. He preached three different sermons on eagles. And we got talking about the places in Hamilton and up in the area that where the eagles used to be in their nest are not now, there now. They moved to another area. And so I went home and just got to praying and thinking about eagles. And God brought me, and you know where I'm going with this scripture. But I'm going to start in verse 28 before I ever get to verse 31. And it's in Isaiah chapter 40. And starting with verse 28, he says this. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29 said, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, He increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint, and to them that have no might, He increaseth it. And they shall, young men shall utterly fall. But verse 31 said, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. With wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. If I had a title and I do this morning. And I could have went with different ones. But this morning's title is grace for all the gears of life. Grace for all the gears of life. You think about this passage, especially verse chapter 31 and verse 31, has been a favorite among Lord's people and God's people for thousands of years. My mom had it on her wall. That was mom's favorite scripture. When mom took her last breath on earth, she quoted that scripture before she knew she was going to be sedated and just be time before she walked into that place. When you think about who God is and about All he does for his people, people use that. In verse 28, though, it writes about the names of God. It says he's an everlasting God, which means he's Elohim Alam. The name identifies God as the eternal God. And I like this because there's never been a time when he wasn't, and there'll never be a time that he isn't. He always has been, and he always will be God. There's no changing that. God is God, and God don't ever change. We change, but God doesn't change. And he's not a Johnny-come-lately to spiritual matters. He existed when there was nothing but him, and he will always exist. And then you think about the name Lord that was in that passage. That name is Jehovah. That name identifies him as the self-existing one. Every other being in the universe depends upon some other being for existence, but God depends on no one. He exists with himself, by himself, and for himself. This name says that he's the covenant keeper, that he's the God who stands by his word, and he's the God who can't be trusted. You can't put your trust in the things of this world. They will fail you, they will leave you, they will turn. But he will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. He can be trusted. If he says it's so, it's so. If he says healing will come, healing will come. If he says deliverance will happen, deliverance will happen. You can trust him at his word. And then you think about the the name that appears so many times in the Old Testament. Compound names of who God is. I have no idea that Pastor Jeff was going to even use two of them at the beginning of service. When you think about it, he is Jehovah Roha. He is my shepherd. 
Psalms 23 said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He's our shepherd. He fights for us. He goes for us. He watches out for us. But he's also Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. I don't have to count on the things of this world. My God owns it all. He has it all. He has a storehouse that's just plentiful and full just for us who love him. He's also Jehovah Shalom. And if we ever needed peace, we need peace. He was also Jehovah Rapha, my healer. He's Jehovah Tanishtiku, the Lord is my righteousness. He is Jehovah Shama. He is the Lord who is there. He is Jehovah Nisi, our banner. Jehovah Makadesh, our sanctifier. Jehovah Elon, the Lord most high. And in verses 28 9, Isaiah writes about the nature of God. He said, He does not faint. God never becomes fatigued despite the fact. That he is upholding all things by the word of his power. He does not grow weary. And he never grows tired. We do not have to worry about a God never having, ever reaching the end of his strength. Because in verse 3 in Hebrews 1. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. We slumber. We tire. But he said in Psalms 121, 3 and 5, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shed upon thy right hand. And he possesses his own knowledge, which means he has no limitations. But then consider what Luke 12, 6 says. Think about it. His knowledge is beyond human comprehension. But he says this. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Not one is forgotten. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered. He said, fear not therefore, ye are more value than many sparrows. Proverbs 15.3 said, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Beholding the evil and the good. He said in Job 34, 21, For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his doings. He shares his power, his strength with those who depend on him. And we depend on him this morning. What an encouragement that should be for the children of God. Verse 30 reminds us of this. Even the strongest of humans is prone to weakness and failure. We all have experienced at some point and some time physical and emotional and spiritual weaknesses. And regardless how well you may handle a situation in the past, there is always a possibility you will grow weak under the various loads of life you are called on to endure. But verse 31 makes it clear. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The word wait means to, to look to or hoping in. In other words, those who do not look to their own power, but who rest in his unfailing strength, will have their strength renewed out of his abundant and unending resources. That's what verse 31 is saying to us. And in these verses, we see people who operate in different gears concerning this verse. And what I want you to see, that whatever gear you find yourself operating in, there is grace for all the gears. There is grace for all the gears. See, there is grace that helps you soar. There's the gear of grace that helps you soar. There are times when it seems there's a little energy left in our spiritual cells. There are times when we feel defeated, deflated. And unable to rise above our circumstance. Can I get a witness in the house on that one this morning? There's times that that happens. But I want you to know that regardless how low you may feel spiritually today. There is help in the Lord for you. (laughs) He promises you to mount up with wings as eagles. And that means to ascend. When the eagle flaps its wings and heads into the sky, it's a wonderful thing to behold. I used to love looking at Russell Ebbing's pictures, who's in glory right now. 
He would show pictures of the eagles taking off out of the nest and feeding their young and landing. What a miraculous sight. When I got to looking at it, how the, them, they stand three foot tall with a wingspan like you wouldn't believe. And to see that, he said, I'll give you wings to soar. This bird that's held to the ground by the same gravity that binds us to earth. Think about it. Can stretch out his wing and in one flap can become airborne. It can rise, breaking gravity, rising higher until it's able to soar above the world with its dangers and strifes and its problems. See, those who learn to hope in the Lord find that same kind of liberty in him this morning. He has a way of helping us break free from the things that bind us. He has a way of helping us to get above our problems, other people's sins and valleys and emotions. He has a way of allowing us to soar above the difficulties of life. Have you ever experienced that in such a time in your life? Have you ever experienced a time when God took you above what you were going through? This ain't in the notes, but I get to thinking about Peter walking on water. I said this one time, and I'll say it again. I believe God called him out of the boat to walk on the water to come to him in the midst of the storm and the winds and the waves. I think he wanted Peter to see what it looked like to walk over everything else everybody else was sinking into. That was falling into. He gives power and strength to those who are hurting to rise above. While the storm lashes the earth beneath with its Wind and rain, the eagle flies above the clouds. See, I looked this up. It says storms provide excellent wind. Hence, an eagle deliberately seeks out a storm. Bison, as I was sharing with somebody this morning, bison are big, burly animals. They will run to a storm if they see a storm because in their mind they're bullies they're bullheaded they think if you're that big and you're that bad I want to see how bad you are because if you can knock me off my feet you're a bad storm but I ain't scared of no storm I don't care what the wind looks like that animal saying, I don't care if the lightning is cracking and the scar, star, the clouds are black. I'm going to charge into this thing headlong because I know where my strength comes from. Oh, I'm going to keep on going. And it says right here, they seek it out rather than avoid it. And here's what I like. It knows that by enduring temporary as- atmospheric adversity... It will be projected to clear and peaceful skies above. So I come tell somebody this morning, just hang on. Just hang on. Because the storm you're enduring is only temporary. I've said it once and I'll say it again. And I even said it last Sunday. Weeping only lasts for the night. And cause joy is coming in the morning. Joy is already here because it's morning. And as far as I know, eagles are the only creature that can look directly into the sun. Oh, this is good. Normally, an eagle uses one set of eyelids for hunting. But the other set is designed by God to allow the eagle to fly directly toward the sun. And And the eagle uses this to its advantage. Why? Because the eagle only has one predator and one enemy and it's called the condor the largest bird in the world but when that eagle takes flight and he starts heading toward the sun that lens comes over that eye but the bird behind him ain't got no lens the bird behind him can't see what he sees he sees a glowing sun that's bringing heat, that has fire, that has warmth, that can do what nothing else can do. And he knows the closer he gets to the sun, the further the bird and the enemy has to get away. I've come to tell you this morning, don't start. Just keep aiming and flying toward the sun. I promise you, God will put a covering on you. That thing that has tried to get a hold of you, that thing is, has tried to bring confusion to your family, that's tried to bring oppression, has tried to bring depression and anxiety, that demonic spirit has to let go because the closer you get to Him, the less it can hold on. The more you get to the Father, the less it can grab a hold of. The closer you get to the Son through reading and praying and fasting and worshiping, Understand, it becomes blinded by God, and what thought had you has to let you go. 
You have to learn that in adversity, don't turn to the things of this world. Bless God, please don't go to Facebook. They give you some great advice. No, no. The devil is a liar. Go to the one who can give you the answers and bring the healing and can loose the spirit of oppression and loose that thing. And that is S-O-N spelled J-E-S-U-S. Ah. Now fast forward. Now what? And here's the thing. He did this for the disciples. When Jesus died on the cross, they were divided, discouraged, and defeated and ready to quit. They believed that all their efforts to serve God had been wasted. And that their faith in Christ had been misplaced. But now fast forward to after the resurrection. (laughs) They became fearless in their proclamation of the gospel. Over 3,000 are saved on the day of Pentecost. 5,000 are saved short time later. Millions are saved by the end of the first century. Why? It all happened because God gave grace to his people. And they were made to soar by his power. See, consider Paul. He was an enemy of the church. But after he was saved, he was empowered to soar high for the glory of God. How do you know? Because he said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, and I reach forth unto the prize of the things that are before. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What is that high prize? It's called heaven. It's eternal life. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's streets of gold. It's gates of pearls. It's a mansion that he has prepared for all those who love him and serve him. And when Paul penned those words, he was in a Roman prison. But that was merely his physical location. Spiritually, Paul was flying high in Christ, making a difference. When most others would have given up, Paul was unable to mount up (laughs) with wings of eagles and touch his generation for God. There's grace to help you soar, but there's grace to help you sprint. Not only is there grace for soar, but there's also grace. The word run means to dart or to move. Paul saw his own life as a race. He said in 1 Corinthians 9, 26, 27, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly so. Fight I, I not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body and bring it into subjection. Least that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be cast away. He said in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought the good fight. I have kept the course and I have kept the faith. Isn't it good to know that one day when you stand before that man named Jesus, you're going to look at him, and when you walk up to the gate, he's, you're gonna, he's going to look at you and say, you have fought the good fight, you have straight stayed the course, you have kept the faith. Now enter in into the joys of the Lord. But for some, he will say, depart from me. I never knew you. They will be ministers Probably get in trouble on this, but I'm telling the truth. Who will say on that day, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy? Did I not bring it? Did I not do what you told me to do? And he's going to say, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. That's why God judges the heart and looks on the heart. He's not looking at the fame and fortune. He's looking at the heart. Hmm. Paul saw it. Where did he get his strength? From looking to the Lord. He got it from waiting on the Lord. He got it in the only dependable, reliable, unfailing source. Paul tells us that his strength was renewed day by day. He said in 2 Corinthians, I just said, he said, For which causeth we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. He was able to tap into this. He was a man of prayer. He was a man of the word. He was a man of faith. And he trusted the Lord to give him strength for the battles. And here's a good thing. He will not fail you either. He will not leave you either. The writer of Hebrews reminds us that life is a race. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. 
Therefore, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Lay, us, lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand throne of God. And the secret to successful running is in verse 2. We must always be looking unto Jesus. When we look to him in prayer, in his word, and waiting before him for guidance and help, he will enable us to run our race without growing weary. I can't speak for you But I want it to end well for me. I don't want to drop out along the way. I don't want to become weary and drop out of the race. I want to keep my eyes fixed on Jesus and sprint to the finish for his glory. It ain't how you start, church. It's how you finish. It is possible as long as we lean on him. Grace to help you soar. Grace to help you sprint. And here's my final point. There's grace to help you stroll. To help you stroll. This last gear of life describes most of life. Not every day of our life is filled with excitement and adventure. Most of the time, our day and lives are just spent walking with the Lord. If you hadn't done it, you ought to try it sometime. You'd be surprised what God will say to you. There are days when you're flying high. Now, you're like, yeah, I feel like Superman. I can leap over a wall, which not really. I could probably leap over a coffee table, about it. I can't climb no mountain, and I ain't sure ain't no faster. I can't even outrun a tricycle. But there's times I feel like, man, bring it on. But then there's times I go, oh, Lord, don't bring it on. There are days spent in a run, sprinting from this thing to that thing, from this place to that place, from this one event to that event, just sprinting and moving, constantly moving. And then there's, the, and there's those kind of days are exciting, but it's only a small part. Most of the days we live will just be sent strolling along with God. And that was how Adam spent his days. According to Genesis 3, The Lord showed up in the garden, walking in the cool of the day, looking for Adam. Micah 6, 8 says that he showeth thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. 1 John 2, 6 said, He that abideth in him, him himself also to walk, even as he walked. And there's something said about a daily walk. That never varies. There's something special about the saint of God who is steady. There's something special about the believer who is just always walking with the Lord. If you meet them today, no matter what they went through, what they have faced in life, they're still walking with the Lord. In fact, there's nothing bigger than a Christian who just walks with the Lord. There's something to be said for finding yourself in his word. In his word. Every day. We get caught up in everything else. We read everything else. But just get caught up reading his word. And there's something to be said about a man or a woman who spends time in prayer with him. And something to be said for simply walking with him. See, there's grace for that. There's grace to keep you up in the morning. There's grace to bow your head in prayer. There's grace to open your Bible and read. There is grace to honor the Lord through your walk. And there is grace to do it today and the day after and the day after. When the Lord told Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. He was saying, Paul, I'm going to give you the support you need to make it through this day and all the days that lie ahead. And here's the good thing. We have the same promise this morning. He's with us to help us and he's faithful. And here is his promise in John 14. Starting with verse 16. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. 
Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it, it, it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be with you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And as we faithfully walk with God, with his help and his grace, we're ready when those times of sprinting and soaring come. Our success in those times always come from our faithfulness with God. You think about David. Little doubt that day blended into a day as David went about his monotony of keeping his father's sheep. You know the story. Countless days of endless routines. The same thing over and over, day in and day out. This was what marked the life of David. Yet, it was in that monotonous routines of life that David learned to be a man of God. It was there alone. Sometimes you can't take people with you where God wants to take you. Sometimes when God wants you alone by yourself, it said, when I said that scripture, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He'll find a way to have you lay down in the green pasture. He'll find a way that you see you need to get alone with God and you need his direction. David applied himself to the task. And then when God promoted him, he didn't have to learn to be faithful. He already knew what that was in the mountains, taking care of the sheep. And when it came time to face Goliath, He was ready to run, not from, but to. (laughs) Because he'd been faithful. He was ready to be king. He was ready to fly because he had been faithful. And what am I saying is this. Keep on praying when it appears that he isn't hearing. That's a word for somebody this morning. Keep on going to church even when it seems nothing much is happening. And if there's a preacher watching online, I simply want to say keep on preaching even when it seems that God is not moving and the people aren't listening. Hello. Keep on witnessing even when no one gets saved. Keep on giving when it feels like it's tight financially. Keep on living for Christ day in and day out, even when others around you fall away. Refuse to turn back or waver from following Him. Because in His time, in His time, He will bless you. He will reward you for being faithful. And when He does, you'll be ready to soar or sprint because you have been faithful in your daily stroll. And God promises this, as thy days, so shall thy strength be. Here is his requirement, and it's very simple in Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thy own understanding, but in all your ways, in every day, in every routine, acknowledge him and let him direct your paths. In conclusion, I ask you this. Have you determined what gear you are in today when you walk through those doors? Some want to soar. He has grace for that. Some of you caught up in daily daily sprint of life. He has grace for that. And most of us are trying to be faithful in our daily walk. And he has grace for that. If he has spoken to you about your walk with him and you need to seek him, seek his face because when you seek his face, this morning he'll give you grace for your race. Verse 31 carries this idea of exchange. When we trust him, we exchange our weakness for his strength. We exchange our inability for his ability. We exchange our shortcomings for his completeness. And I end with this quote from Warren Worsby. He said this, The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. The greatest heroes of faith are not always those who seem to be soaring. Often it is they who are potentially plotting. As we wait on the Lord, he enables us to fly higher and run faster, but also to walk longer. Blessed are the plotters, for they eventually arrive at their destination. What gear are you in this morning? Are you walking with him? Is there something you need God to have you 
understand what it means to mount up with wings and soar above the storm that's going on. What is it that you need God to give you grace for this morning? Because we all have a destination. That destination is either heaven or hell. You have a destination. You either going to go by way of the grave or you're going to go when the trump of God shall sound and all those that are here shall be caught up with him in the air ever, evermore to live with him eternally. If the trump of God sounded this morning, would you go or would you stay? The hard part when I get thinking about that, Sister Joyce, even when I was a youth pastor and in different camps and doing different things, it was always every time I went to the pulpit for the first time, it was like God would say, what would happen if I came now? What would it look like in this room? Who would be here and who would not be here? Whose child would be here and whose child would not be? What grandparent or mother that you would always call? I used to call my mom all the time. If there was a storm coming and it got crazy, and I didn't know if it was Jesus about to come back, because I always used to hear, listen to that song, The King is Coming. Praise God, he's coming for me. The lightning flashed, the thunder rolled, the air drew cold. I can remember many times looking up and going, this is all signs. I got to get home. And I would run home. It didn't matter where I was at outside playing. It didn't matter how old I was. If I was a teenager, I would try to get home as fast as I could because we didn't have cell phones then, youngins. We had the rotator thing with a cable about 40 miles long that you could throw to the back of the church and reel it in and still say hello. So, but if I knew if I got home and mom and daddy's there, I'm going to be all right. But to pull up in the park in their, in their driveway and see their cars, yeah. Go to the door, yeah, and walk in, and they're nowhere to be found. Fear gripped me that day. I said, oh God, I have missed the rapture. I've allowed the things that I was indulging in. I allowed the things that was hanging on to me. The things that I should have let go of way back. I knew the scripture. I've heard it preached. I've heard it teached. But I chose not to let go. But that day, I was like, well, maybe mom and daddy's over at mama and papa brooms across the street. I run over there. and They ain't there. I'm like, I have really been left behind. It sounds humorous in a way, but the fear that will grip you when you think, I missed it. I will never see them again. I'll never be with them again. Everything I have been told about in Revelation, everything is going to come to pass. I'm going to be caught up in the middle of it. How am I going to refuse the mark of the beast? If I refuse it, it's going to cut my head off. I mean, it's all biblical. How am I going to make this happen? How can I do this? I can't do this. And I remember going back to my mama's house and sobbing and weeping. And I just simply said, God, if you'll give me one more chance. And please let me know this ain't when you came back. I promise I'll turn my life around. And then you hear that sweet sound. Rodney, are you okay? Bless God I am now. <laughs> but now I didn't take that as an opportunity for salvation to go back in to where I came from. I used that as an opportunity for salvation. And God let that happen to let me realize time is short. And what you must do, you must do now. I told you, God told me that three months ago when everything started happening so fast here. He told me in the car, time is of the essence. And I said, God, what are you saying? Time is of the essence. What you do, you must do now because I'm coming quickly. I'm telling you, I heard it as plain as having a conversation with Tara or anybody in the car. I heard him say, time is of the essence. And what you must do, you must do now because I'm coming quickly. We got to be about the Father's business. You got family members who need to be in this house. When's the last time you invited them? You got friends that need to be in the house of God somewhere. It don't have to be here, but being a Bible-believing church... Just saying, there's too much of that hogwash. 
around. That's why we call it in the South just a bunch of hogwash. It's not true. They're, get them in a Bible-believing church that preaches the Word of God, that tells truth is truth, right is right, wrong is wrong. There's no tinkling of the cymbals to soothe your ears so you'll come back and be with me next Sunday. I'd rather people come in this house visiting, walk out under conviction, than go out going, oh, that was just that. Woo, we'll go back there. And not an ounce of conviction. And what they came in with is just as strong as it was when they came through the door. Preach the word. It ain't popular. But pastor, we have to do it. Because if this preaching keeps you out of hell and keeps a family member out of hell and it entitles all of us to go up at one time, he suffered, I'll suffer. He was persecuted, I, was per- I will be persecuted. You'll be persecuted as a Christian. And they say Christianism isn't, being Christ-like isn't fun. It's the greatest thing ever. It's the greatest thing ever. Do you have to work at it? Yeah. Did you get your job just by walking in? Did you get that promotion just by cause who you are? No, you got that promotion because you worked at it. And you earned it. You work at it as a Christian. You don't let those things that kept you bound become that again. An English teacher said it. Those that can't remember their past are condemned to repeat it. I know what my past was like and I don't want to go back there. I want to soar. I want to sprint. And I'm going to stroll. I'm going to fly with him. I'm going to run with him. And I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to love him. And I don't care if it hair lips the devil. I'm going to call him king of kings and lord of lords. I'm going to call him my alpha and my omega. I'm going to call him my beginning and my ending. Because I know without a shadow of a doubt, no weapon that is formed against me shall ever prosper. It may come, but it won't prosper. Every tongue that riseth, he said, it shall fall. And I know that greater is he that's in me than anything this world has to offer. It offers a whole lot of stuff to us. It gives us opportunity for things. But God is great. Greater than the next thing. The next best thing ain't what the world gives. The next best thing is his name is Jesus. He's going to heal you. He'll deliver you. He can call on him in the midnight hour. And he said, I'll show up. I'll never leave you, nor shall I forsake you. You call on somebody else, they might not even answer the cell phone. They might not even answer a text message. But God's answer is always yes and amen. He always hears you. He always sees you. There's nowhere you can go that is so different dark that is so distant that God cannot see where you're at and what you're doing mount up with wings as eagles fly over the problem soar stroll sprint oh I feel the Holy Ghost hmm Holy, 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 holy. You're saying, Pastor, what, what are you feeling? Well, that's easy to find out. Sometimes you just have to step in to when God is stirring it. God is moving. God is stirring. God is fixing. God is preparing. God is strengthening. God is uplifting. Wait on you, Lord. <laughs> Wait on you, Lord. <laughs> he shall renew your strength. So wait, I say, I wait on you, Lord. (laughs) I wait on you, Lord. He shall renew your strength. So wait, I say, I just wait on you, Lord. We wait on you, Lord. My, 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 my. He shall renew your strength. So wait, I say, we wait on you, Lord. We wait on you, Lord. He shall renew your strength. So wait. Hour. 
wait on you, Lord. No matter what comes my way, I wait on you, Lord. So wait, I say, with every eye closed and every head bowed, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet all over this house. It's early. We got a little time. But you're saying this morning, I need to rise above some stuff. I need God to let me mount up on wings of eagles. I know there's children we need to go get, but right now in this moment, if that's you, you're saying, Pastor, I need grace. I need peace. I need direction. This altar is open right now. This altar is open right now for you to come and kneel, to come and stand, But this altar is open. Maybe you're saying, God, I just need God for the first time. This is your morning that God shall restore. He shall renew. And he shall bring healing. If that's you this morning, I'm not going to tarry long. Saints begin to pray if God took you above the storms. You've soared above the storms. Once come, if I can get some brethren to come pray with him right now. Father, I thank you that we're going to continue to pray for him that what he's needing, it shall happen. But God, I'm believing that for every family in this room that miracles will happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Healings will happen. I need some ladies to come help us pray over here. Right over here. Come on, come pray, come pray, come pray. Sometimes if it was you, you'd be just like to know that there's somebody helping you mount up with wings. They're helping you soar above the problem. Wait on you, Lord. Wait on you, Lord. We will renew your strength. So wait, I pray. Wait on you, Lord. Right now, Jesus. Right now, Jesus. somebody beside you, if it's your wife, if it's your husband or a grandparent, and believe that God is going to send grace to your family, that he's going to send miracles to your house. He's going to allow things that have latched on to let go and let God refresh and renew. Let it be done. Next Sunday is baby dedication, and next Sunday is family Sunday. And unless God changes me, I'm going to go with something else I learned about an eagle. That he don't just fly to the sun to lose the enemy on his back. But it was pretty interesting. 
when he needs that renewing, he flies to the sun and the sun burns off the calluses, I'm going to say, in front of people's eyes. He burns the feathers, old feathers off as he aims toward the sun and then he dips three times in the water and he comes up young and strengthened. Three, we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Old coming down, new coming up. The wings are burnt off and the eyes are clear. The youngness comes because the Word says, I am a new creation in Christ. Mm. Mm. Pastor, Brother Aaron, is that a what I think it is? I know Brother Jeff is going to come up and dismiss us in prayer, but could you come up here with that? I didn't even talk to him about what I was going to be preaching this morning, and he came. Mm.
As I said, he had no idea what I was going to be sharing. The thing I've learned about getting to know Brother Aaron, he's a full native Cherokee Indian, speaks fluent Cherokee. And out of this whole house, there's only one person that can touch the feather of an American bald eagle, and that's him. It's a heavy fine if you touch it or I touch it. But if you're a Native American, you have a right. He has that privilege. Had no idea. But I've always wondered what it felt like to get under the wing of a protector. To get under the wing of a coverer. You don't know how bad I needed that. There's something about a covering. And there's something about knowing that if I just wait, he renew. If I just wait in his timing, he will restore. He'll turn your mourning into dancing and weeping into joy. Let me encourage you this week. And I'm going to let him share what he would like to share. And me and Tara's going to go out and greet everybody in the foyer. Wait on him this week. Ever what that decision is, wait on him. Ever what it is you need to do, wait on him. And when you do, I promise you. There's a feeling like you'll never have ever felt before when you feel that wing and you feel that covering. I'm giving you. Are we thankful for a pastor's wife who's sensitive to leaving the Holy Spirit? That was one of the coolest things I've seen. That was neat. Carrie and I have only been here a short time, but I have seen week after week where God has stopped service yes. and switched directions for one person. Yes. I saw it happen for our pastor this morning. I've seen it happen for some of you. It's happened for me since I've been here. A little word of encouragement to you. It happened here. It happened here. It happens in God's house. We have devotions at my house, and we have times of prayer. But there's something special about being in his house. His house. Lord, we thank you for your house. And Lord, again, I speak blessing to those who came to uh, take care of your house this weekend. But Lord, as we go through our, our week, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to remember the eagle's feather. Lord, how it surrounded our pastor, who's our spiritual leader, which means it's surrounding us this week. There's a lot of school activities. There's a lot of life happening right now, Lord. And we get so distracted, but let us remember the feathers and your <laughs> wings of protection that go with us. And Lord, I pray that you guard our hearts and let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart to be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. You just miss the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hope to see you here Wednesday for the Harvest Fest.